there's certain athletes that are dumb athletic in the NFL and the NBA. And then there's certain ones in the NBA and in the NFL that aren't really athletic. You know what I mean? It's just, I, it's hard to take a, I don't think you can take a whole spectrum of the NFL and the NBA and say, this group is more athletic than this group. Welcome back to another episode. Episode, I think we're on 83, possibly 84. I'm not really sure. Guys, remember to like and subscribe. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of the above. The engagement does wonders for us. All right, fellas, got a question for us to start this off. I need you guys to tell me what sport do you think has the best athletes. Now, I'm not talking great, as in, you know, who has the greatest greats. I mean, just the best pure athletes. Speed, agility, jumping, running, all the above. Is it baseball, basketball, hockey? Did I say football already? Football or golf? I just threw golf in there just to do it. <laughs> I just threw golf in there just to do it. So do we think between baseball, basketball, football, and hockey, who has the best athletes? Jordy, lead us off. You see what I did there? <laughs> lead off. You see what I did there? Sure. It's not baseball, though. Okay. All right. It's uh, definitely football. You think it's football? Yeah. Care to expound? No. <laughs> no, it's just football. Um, I don't know. These dudes... Like basketball players, they jump up in the air and they get hit, and it's like they're bitching for fouls. NFL players on a routine basis get hit, and that's just part of the game. Yeah, but they that's, do everything the basketball players do plus get hit. It's about adjusting, adjusting though. That's the game now. Like I hate to say it, but the NBA is trying Austin to Rivers sell calls. is wrong. Okay, we're we're gonna get so, to that. Don't get don't 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 go, don't move too fast. I won't jump ahead, but football. Matthew, who do you think has the best athletes? Uh, football, football. Yeah, yeah. I want to say basketball. It's close. I mean, I think they're all interchangeable. So, <laughs> so my only thing about football is. And this is no slight to football athletes. I think football has an amazing, amazing athletes. You know, I have friends that play football, even in the NFL, and they're some of the best athletes I know. Um, football is a little tough for me because a lot of football players, like, you know, they play the same position. So it's like you only have to master the technique of, like, one thing. Yeah. You know, like, now DB is incredibly hard to play. You have to do everything the receiver is doing backwards. That takes incredible athleticism. But like in basketball, a center doesn't just post up. They don't just rebound. They don't just time blocks. They bring the ball up. Hell, I've seen centers go into a pick and roll. I've seen Jokic come off of us, <laughs> initiate a pick and roll when he's the ball handler. Now, Jokic isn't a phenomenal athlete as far as his athleticism goes. Right. What but, they do on the court is not, I don't think that has anything to do with their athletic ability. Right. Well, it does. Uh, it has something to do with it, but that's not what I'm judging it off of. Okay. Yeah, I. I, I guess it is football. I guess. It's close. I mean, I don't. They, there's. There's, certain athletes that are dumb athletic in the NFL and the NBA, and right. then there's certain ones in the NBA and in the NFL that aren't really athletic. You know what I mean? It's just, I. It's hard to take a. I don't think you can take a whole spectrum of the NFL and the NBA and say, this group is more athletic than this group. Yeah. I mean, I gave you an answer, but that was just for the sake of the I question. guess. Yeah. I mean, but like, I seriously don't think you could, I think if you broke it down, technically it would be the NFL because they have 55 players on the roster. <laughs> give me Jordan, give me a freak athlete in the NFL. Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill. Hill Justin athlete. Jefferson. Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett. Yeah. Um, because, like, I'm looking at I'm thinking in my head, freak athlete. Lamar athletes. Jackson. He's Lamar a freak Jackson, athlete. yeah. Freak athlete, yeah. Um, Bo I'm Jackson, thinking of, one of the greatest athletes. Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Odell. Yeah. Seen those dudes play like, basketball. Seen them play football. Because I'm thinking in my head, okay, I'm thinking ba basketball athletes. First name that pops in my head is, of course, LeBron James. 
Um, then I'm looking at, remember, Derrick Rose. Okay, John hold Moran. on, hold on, hold on. We're on to something. Russell Westbrook. Okay, hold on. 10 we're years on, ago. We're on to something. Okay. When you look at an NBA player and you're like, damn, this dude is dumb athletic, what makes you gauge that? Usually speed and his, like, jumping ability or even, like, his ability to, like, change directions. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you ever see, like, uh, like Derrick Rose, the way he used to be able to contort his body on layups. Yeah. At the f- at full speed, even. Coming down court, uh, head downhill as fast as he can, Euro step, and then he's bending around a dude to get an open, to get a layup. Yeah. You know, like, I think about that dunk on Kirk Heinrich. Yeah. You know what dunk I'm talking about. No, that's about. Goran Dragic. Oh, it was Goran Dragic, yes. Kirk, yeah. Think about that. Okay, now. so I threw you an alley you, 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 like, kind of, like, laid it up. Okay, hit me. So when you're talking about NBA players, Jordan, if I if you were looking at NBA players and you're like, damn, that dude is a freak athlete, what would make you say that? I mean, he's jumping out the gym. Jumping out the gym. Dunking, right? Yeah, blocking shit, dunking, whenever, anything. Whenever we see NFL player highlights of them playing basketball, what are they usually doing? Dunking. They usually dunk in the basketball. The so Miles like, Garrett highlights. That's what I'm saying. That's he all I've seen him do is either. dunk the basketball. I've never seen him shoot it. So is Miles Garrett a freak athlete because he got bounce and he could dunk? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it, I think it also plays into like just being a like being fast. That plays into it. Like, De'Aaron Fox is a freak athlete, even though he's not tearing the rim off the hoop. Like, he's right. still a freak athlete. He's fast yeah, just as ability fuck. to control fast himself, himself <laughs> yeah. like in that speed. I mean, I guess there's a strength element too because, like your example, Miles Garrett. Yes, he can. All his highlights are dunk, and he can't shoot worth a shit. But you couple his ability to get up for one, his ability to be able to be athletic enough to do a windmill, you know, to do tomahawks, on top of him being as strong as an ox. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying though. Like we're you're you, a lot of times you judge a dude in the M, or in the NFL on their athleticism, like when they dunk. You know what I'm saying? But then you take a dude in the NBA and you're like. This dude does a, a 360 with me, and you're like, oh, my God, this is the greatest athlete, athlete I've ever seen. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, like you got so, NBA players who are doing their job and then coming over here and just doing that, too. Right. Yeah, for cause, fun. Because I'm trying to think, like, you never see NBA players, like, playing football, like, going out. Like, who's that? Uh, Anthony Edwards. I was like, I want to be quarterback. And he was, like, throwing the ball, like, messing around and stuff. We did have the lockout, though, the one yeah. year. LeBron and KD. LeBron played. and KD. They had like, teams. He was looking all right. It was looking all right. All right, well, there is no real answer here. It's all opinionated. So, obviously, I think the world knows where we're going next. James Jones and Austin Rivers have had beef. Now, Where did James Jones come from? He just I think he's the first person that decided to respond. You know, I don't love athletes being as sensitive as they are. You know, when someone attacks your sport, you don't got to get immediately offended and attack that person and attack him personally. There's he, two cats from the same sport, ain't it? No, it was so James Jones went at Austin Rivers. Not not James Jones NFL, Green Bay Packers James Jones. That's his name, ain't it? Who? James Jones. Wasn't he a receiver for the Packers? I thought you were talking about the dude that rode LeBron's coat. Uh, coat Me too. Thing. You said the one that did what? That, rode LeBron's coat. Cock. Is that not what? him? <laughs> <laughs> okay, James nah. Jones was a receiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. NFL okay. James Jones. You had me confused, and then yeah, and then all I could think of was this is basketball and basketball. Yeah, time. like <laughs> all I could think of the dude is shoot the three pointer, the the GM for the yeah, Suns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James Jones. That's all I could think of. Us. So NFL James Jones got extremely offended by Austin Rivers for the people who live under a rock. He used to wear the hoodie. Yes, he was like. Yeah, yes. he used to wear the hoodie under his Packers jersey. Yeah, yes. yeah, okay. So for the people who live under a rock and is unaware of everybody who's been talking about this topic, and for the people who are probably going to see this video and be like, oh my God, you're stealing content from this person. Come on now, everybody's talking nobody's about this. Nobody's stealing that. nothing. We're just yeah. talking. Everybody's talking about this. All right, Pat Max just talking about it every day this week. Yeah, we're just yapping. Dude. Um, Austin Rivers said he can think of 30 NBA players that can play in the NFL. But, Austin Rivers smokes crack. But he can't think of, I think the number was five. NFL players that cannot play in the NBA. Now, Come I disagree on. with you heavily. Disagree with you heavily. Now, listen. NBA. I'm sure as shit that there is five fucking players 
that can go play in the NBA. 100%. I agree but with you. But I am on the train that it would be easier for it to be vice versa. Okay. I like it, Matt. Let's talk about it. Now, before you expound, let me just say one thing. Okay. I'm sure you can find five players. I don't want anybody bringing up the physicality aspect of football. Now, I know it's a part of the game, and we cannot take it out. I'm not saying take it out. But if they would have chose that sport, they would be used to it. You adjust. Exactly. Okay, because let's be real, and I'm not going to sit here and act like LeBron is Especially the way the game is right now. Right. LeBron's a crybaby. He flops. He tries to sell calls. He flops around like a wet fish on the ground when he gets fouled. But let's not act like in the early 2000s when basketball was still rough that LeBron wasn't getting pulled to the ground eh. with dudes on his shoulders eh. and still making layups. Hey, there is a picture. We ain't of, talking about all that. There is a picture of Serge Ibaka literally riding LeBron to the hoop. Next. Riding. I mean, LeBron played football. So, but with that being said, De'Aaron Fox, John Morant, these dudes who are lightning fast, they're 6'2", I don't know, 200 pounds. John Morant's probably like 190. Right. That's a wide receiver in the NFL, right? Tyreek Hill is 5'10", probably 200. Right. These dudes are being tackled by DBs. Right. Who Denzel, are also 5'10. Denzel Ward is 5'10, 195. So let's not act like Miles Garrett will be tackling John Morant. Right. Of course, he might, a linebacker might get him on a slant or on, somebody on might get him on a jet sweep. sweep. Yeah, yeah, of course. Happens. We got that. We understand. But if Devontae Smith can survive right. in the NFL, the motherfucker's smaller than me. He is little. He is literally, look him up, smaller than me. Right. Height and weight. Yeah. So you can't tell me that De'Aaron Fox, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Edwards, a thick boy. Wow. Pause. No pause. All Diddy. Whoa. Thick boy. He can survive in the NFL. For sure. So I don't like that argument of the physicality. Line up Zach Levine at receiver and see what happens, bro. bro. Hey, OBJ's OBJ's catch will be forever forgotten if you put Zach Levine in the NFL, bro. Zach Levine is, OBJ is like 5'10", 5'11". Zach Levine, what, 6'5"? 6'4", 6'5", bro. 6'4", (laughs) 6'5"? So I wanted to have a little fun with this. And instead of beating a dead horse like what's being done all week, I want us to create... A starting five with a six man for the NBA of all NFL players. Can we also make an 11? No, we don't have to do that right now. 11 man roster. Hey, yeah. we can do that. We can, we'll have to save that for a different day. We'll have to do 22 offense and defense. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that because yeah. I think some guys can play two way. Yeah. I think John Moran can They wouldn't be a have to, but yeah, we just pick one. I think Anthony Edwards would be a great there, linebacker. There's enough to play both. 100%. Trust me. So let's create a starting five. For the NBA, made of nothing but NFL players, only using current NFL players. Current. At point guard. Point guard. Who do we have? I already know who you're going to name first, so go ahead and put the camera on you so you can say him. Yeah, I don't think you know who I'm going to I'm gonna say. That's I'm going to white guy immediately. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to say Lamar. Lamar at point guard. Okay. Can Lamar play hell? basketball? <sighs> you almost baited me. You almost baited me. I'm the master baiter. <laughs> you almost got me because I was just going to say something crazy. <laughs> I was going to say something crazy. All right, you got Lamar that you're nominating. Matt, who you nominating? Um, let me think. Uh, There's a guy that I'm thinking of that hasn't played in the NFL yet. Was just in the draft. Basketball highlights surfaced. <laughs> He didn't look half bad. I was thinking two guard for him. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I feel like T. Higgins got to be on the roster. T. Higgins is on this roster. Okay. T. Higgins is what, 6'5"? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, look up, I look believe up. so. Unfortunately, this He's is going to pro- be a small ball lineup. It's going to have to be. Because our biggest no player height. is probably going to be 6'6 six, six to 6'7 six, max. So I would love to nominate Cooper DeJean to man six, this four. team. He's what? 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six, four. That's a two-guard or a point guard. Okay, well, he's probably going to be our three. But we'll get there. I like Cooper DeGene as the point guard. All right? Not going to tell you reasons why. I just like him as our point guard. Now, there's another dude. We already mentioned him. I think they call him the Slim Reaper, too. They call Devontae Smith the Slim Reaper? Yeah. Devontae Smith. I don't know if you guys have seen his highlights. 
Devontae Smith used to get busy, bro. It's high school. Bro, we might have to be like really, really small ball. Like T. Higgins might have to be the four. Oh, let, I got. Don't worry, I got us. Don't worry, I'm gonna get there. I got us. Because Miles Garrett will be the five. I got. I got us. Don't worry, I got some guys. But I like Cooper DeJean and Devontae Smith. They could probably be interchangeable. Who's taller between those two? Can you look that up for me? <laughs> because they're they're small guys. We got T. Higgins as our three guard, right? Is that is that are we good with that? Yeah. All right. And then another guy just came into the uh, league. Cooper DeGene, 6'1". Devontae Smith is six foot on the dot. Ah, all right, we're going to put Cooper at our two guard just for the sake of him having that one more inch. He's going to be our two guard. Yeah, you know one what? inch matters. Listen, it's going to be Luka and Kyrie. Whoever gets the rebound, you bring the ball up and initiate the offense, all right? We're going to run positionless basketball here, people, okay? Don't worry. Coach Dante got this, all right? I know how to navigate. I know Dante this got a coaching job, and everybody else's opinions went out the door. This is Dante's starting five. Well, this is our starting five, but I sent the topics, and I don't think you guys did the lineup. I think so. I, I already Lamar. have the lineup done. <sighs> okay, <laughs> so that's the only reason why. Can Lamar? I throw a name out there? Of course you can. Court of Jordan, you're not allowed because I'm the one, only <sighs> one man in this. But yeah, Donald Parham. Oh, six eight. eight. Listen. He might smack his head, though. I don't know if he has any basketball ability <laughs> Zach at all. Gentry, 6'8". Zach Gentry. I like Donald Parham better. Of course you do. <laughs> what you mean, of course I do? He's black. Oh, wow, bro. <laughs> that is not why. He's, he's probably better at basketball. I've seen him jump. That's why I like him better. I think Donald Parham might be our center. Yeah, bro. His oh, Madden on, card is sweet. There was one other person. He does have a crazy Because I was card. doing some research, a little bit of research last night, and I, I got to remember this dude's name. What about my boy Keon Coleman? How tall is he? Keon Coleman, I think, is 6'5". Look him up real quick. Look him up real quick. And then if you guys don't mind, put your, uh, put your volume all the way down on your phone. 6'3". 6'3"? Yeah. That's okay, it? Okay, hold on. Hold on. All right, we might have to replace him. Trent Brown is 6'9", and Dan Skipper is 6'10". Who's Dan Skipper? He's a lineman, offensive tackle. Oh, I do know who Dan Skipper is. I'm sorry. Ah. He's on the Colts. Um, Check your phone, Jordan. You also have Orlando Brown o, Jr. like an O-line or a D-lineman in there? I mean, you can. Listen, he's going to be back to the basket bully ball, bro. Calais Campbell 6'8". Clay's can't win, but he's just old. Yeah. That's the only reason why. What about Mo Alley Cox? Mo Alley Cox played for VCU. No. What's that other dude that the Colts had that tore our fucking mouths out, man? Yeah, bro. That he tight was end. What that the was Mo Alley Cox, wasn't no. it? No. No. No? I think he was like number one or number seven. No. Some random. Sh- he was a single digit, I thought. No, he was number 81, I believe. He was big as shit and tore our mouths out. I'm looking right now. Bro, when you Google Mo Alley Cox, the first thing that comes up is this. It's a picture of my dude shooting a free throw for VCU. Mo Alley Cox has to make this roster. There was a... Mo, Mo Alley Cox was 81, so that's who's tearing y'all mouth out for the Colts. No, it wasn't him. No, bro. He was number 80. Okay, about six. He's 81. That's all I'm saying. I know who Mo, Mo Alley Cox... He was like a rookie. Jelani Woods. Yes. Jelani Woods, nine Jelani re- Woods, a wide receiver? Nine receptions, 98 yards <laughs> at tight end in one game. Against oh, he's at tight end. Yeah, he's a tight end. 12.3 yards six, per reception. Who, Mo Alley Cox? No, no Jelani, Jelani Woods. Woods. Is you like that? Hey. Mo Alley Cox, how, how tall is he? Y'all ready for this? How tall is he? Uh, six, seven. Oh, okay. Well, then he could be the power forward. Or Miles DeGarrett. Well, I, I thought like he's 6'5". Be... He's 6'5". Oh, okay. I'll take that. Aren't back. we missing? There was a player that played basketball and football in college. Jimmy Graham, but Jimmy Graham's old. Nate Robinson. <laughs> uh, maybe I was thinking of Jimmy Graham. Hey, Mo Alley Cox is VCU's all-time leading career shooting percentage at 57.4. And he's a, he's second in career blocks for VCU. That's insane. I don't remember <laughs> seeing that dude at all. Me either. Did you guys we see only that? Play, we only pay attention to VCU when they're in the tournament. Let's be real. Yeah. Did you guys see that um, DJ Burns is getting like... Lyman offers. Yeah. Yeah. For the NFL, yeah. not 
college. Yeah, they yeah. want him to be a lineman. He would be a great lineman, bro. Dude's got great speed. His footwork is amazing, bro, for a big dude. Ain't that wild? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let, let's run through our lineup real quick so we can put a button on this and move on. At point guard, Cooper DeGene or Devontae Smith, either or. So two guard is one of those two. Cooper DeGene at point guard, Devontae Smith at two guard. We're going T. Higgins for our three? You have to. Okay. And then for our four, Moali Cox is a – he's 6'5", though. That's the only thing. Who is your two? Devontae Smith at six foot. Who's the one? Cooper at six It's got to be one or the other. Yeah. But T. Higgins, Higgins got to play the two. Okay. But one of those is six men. Yeah. All right. So I, I think uh, Devontae Smith was better because I've seen highlights of him other other than him just dunking. Cooper DeGene was him just dunking. Yeah. Go Devontae Smith, T. Higgins. Moali Cox at the three. Moali Cox at the three. At the four. You're looking at it's Miles Garrett the four. Listen, he's short and undersized, but he's strong. Yeah. So, you know, you think of the fours in the NBA, Anthony Davis, what he go do versus Miles Garrett besides get pushed on the ground? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, I tell you right now, Miles Garrett can guard Jokic. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you right now. Oh, Jokic <laughs> is putting that bitch right over his head. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Every time. And our five, who is it, Zach Gentry? No. <laughs> or, uh, the other dude. Oh, Donald Parham. Donald Parham. Donald Parham. So, Barbershop Break Room's NFL starting five is... I don't even know. Dar- usually, tight ends are pretty good at basketball. Y- usually. Historically. Yeah, usually. Yeah. I guarantee if you look up, like, a list of, like, the top five football players who played basketball, I bet you half of them are tight ends. Yeah. I I bet at least that. three of them. I would agree with that. So barbershop break. Rooms. Antonio Gates. I know. Um, dog. Jimmy Graham was. Jimmy Graham. One. Dog. There's two right there. Didn't Tony G play basketball too. Tony Gonzalez played basketball. That's three right there. Yeah. All right. So is the camera on me, Jordan? Yeah. All right. So barbershop break rooms. NFL starting five. At point guard we have Devonte Smith. At shooting guard we have T Higgins. At the three guard small forward we have Mo Ali Cox. At four, we have undersized Miles Garrett. And at the five, we have Donald Parham. And for six men, we could have Cooper DeGene if we want. Not going to lie to you, I really like Keon Coleman there. All from all from his dunk highlights. I seen my dude go baseline and windmill, and I was sold. <laughs> that sold me alone, bro, when I seen that. No, nah, bro, you got to have a, a— For the sake you gotta of diversity— have a, You got to have a glue guy. For the sake of diversity, our glue guy should probably be a nice, fundamentally sound individual. Cooper DeGene. What color is glue? White. <laughs> Cooper DeGene is Barbershop Break Room's sixth man. Tell us who we missed in the comment section when you guys disagree with every player on this list. Because that's what you do no matter what we do. Yeah, no matter well, who when we you, play. Uh, when you look up best NFL players that played basketball, Jimmy Graham's one. Yep. Donovan McNabb is two. She. Antoine Randall Ellis three, Connor Barwin, if I get flamed, I don't know who that is. He's four. Uh, Terrell Owens at five, Tony G six, Julius Peppers seven, Antonio Gates eight. Julius, Julius Peppers, Peppers was yeah. a dog. He played for North Carolina, North Carolina bro. bro. <laughs> like, yeah, that's crazy. All right, so let's put a button on that. Um, it's safe to say that we uh we understand what Austin Rivers was trying to say, but we agree and disagree. I think uh, he took it way too far. Like 30 to five is a crazy yeah. ratio. Like, I think there are a good amount of NFL athletes who could. And when you just say play in it's, one sport, especially when you say five, especially when there's 55 players on a, on roster, a roster or yeah. 53. Well, sorry. And he kept it vague. He said play. He didn't say play at a high level. He didn't say. Start. Yeah. He didn't say become an all star. He didn't say all pro. Yeah. yeah I'm you know? sure that Jokic could play like a D tack. Uh, yeah. I mean, do I think John Moran would be all pro? I don't know. I don't fucking know, but... Do I think he can get 500 yards? Sure. He's dumb athletic. The other thing, like, throw him the ball and let him make something happen. Yeah, The argument sure. that we kind of changed is, like, I don't think Austin Rivers' argument was if they played football instead of basketball. I think he means leaving the NBA the right league. now, go yes. to the NFL yes. right now. Take you yeah, out. I, you I think there. they could do that, too. Yeah, I think it's like... I think that changes it a little bit. Jalen Green? Jalen Green would be a freak wide receiver. Freak wide, wide receiver, bro. Freak wide receiver, bro. Um... So let's let's keep going on basketball, guys. We had a we have a lot of news coming out, a lot of rumors and stuff like that. And um, first JJ off, Reddick. I want to talk about. Would you say JJ Reddick? So 
that's something I really want to see if we can get to as well. Um, I want to talk about the draft and the draft lottery first. Do we like the draft lottery? Jordy, why don't you go ahead and lead us off? Um, Big baseball guy here, if you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be honest. I have no idea who got picked in the draft. Didn't watch it. Don't care. Um, I um, do the like draft the draft didn't happen yet. It's a lottery. The draft hasn't... The draft lottery. Yeah, I didn't watch it. I have no idea who got where. It's okay. It's no okay. clue. You don't got to know who happened um, in the draft lottery just to see if you... I do like, like the idea of the lottery, though. I think the NFL should adopt that because it stops teams from tanking as much. You still get people that tank, but it reduces it a little, I think. Um, yeah, I, I like it. So to update you on the draft lottery, the Atlanta Hawks had a 3% chance to land the number one pick, and they got it. Yeah, that's cool. So they take in uh, Michael Penix? <laughs> Matt, before I share my opinion, because already, I've already developed a whole opinion on this so you can go ahead and share your opinion real quick on the draft and the draft lottery uh i don't have much i just i think it's i mean it does suck. it sucks that like the worst team doesn't get it but i mean i just feel like it it completely stops everybody from tanking and losing games and just being annoying okay you it's know what not I'm a saying? race for it's last like, yeah that more. shit's stupid as hell i mean just don't suck so I have mixed feelings about it because it does suck. I feel bad, but like when the team actually is garbage and they can't win the games, you know what I'm saying? There that you go. that sucks. There but you go. but then there's also teams that are trying to lose games and they see like, oh man, this team sucks and they can't win. We need to not win. All right. Yeah. We play them and we don't win. Right. We get the pick. Right. So when you see a generational player coming into the draft, let's say uh, Victor Webinyama. Yeah, that's a person you want to tank for, right? I I, I would think so. Yeah. Um, I don't like the draft lottery for the simple fact of you shouldn't get a reward for being the worst team in the league, but I don't think the case of being the worst team in the league is always tanking for the first pick. Not always. I don't think you can sit here and explain to me for 5, 10, 15, or 20 minutes that the Detroit Pistons tanked this year. I do not think they tanked. The Washington Wizards, I do not think they tanked. I think these are two teams who are poorly constructed, who have no rapport, they have no stars, and they're not good. Kay Cunningham is an emerging star. I'm not saying he's not a good basketball player. Kyle Kuzma is a good basketball player. Jordan Poole is a good basketball player. None of these dudes are stars. Kay Cunningham is emerging. For the people who heard me say they're not stars, he is an emerging star. I think he will be an all-star. He is a very good player. But I don't think these teams are tanking on purpose. I think they are incredibly bad. They have, But that's because of the lottery. If so, there was no lottery, a lot of teams would probably tank. But that's the thing, though. There are times where, like, you don't get rewarded. Like, if there was no lottery, the Wizards would get rewarded for being the worst team in the league, or the Pistons would be rewarded for being the worst team in the league, and they would get the number one overall pick. But the thing is... They're still the worst team in a lottery setting where they don't know if they're going to get the first overall pick because I don't think their intention is to stink to go get that franchise changing player because they're just not good. Okay, there's but let's a difference say, between you have potential yeah. and then you just decide to, hey, one more year of this, let's draft that guy and he'll get us over the hump. There are cases a lot of times where teams, the Cavaliers, for example, when LeBron left. Do you think they were tanking when they won 19 games? They just weren't good. <laughs> like they, That is a lot of times where these guys just stink. They're poorly constructed. They got no stars. They got a bad coach or they have a coach that just don't know what to do with these guys. Like What, what you doing with Tristan Thompson is one of your best players. For sure. But, I mean, it, even if you don't get that first pick, you get first, second, or third, you should be able to find yourself a very reliable player. And that's what I mean. Like You might have a team – that, yeah, wins 19 games, they're guaranteed first pick, whatever, that's cool. But there might be a team that, like, they're all right, but they're tanking to get a better draft pick, even if it's not a top three pick, even if it's a to get into the top 10 instead of the top 15, you're still tanking to get down rather than now we have a lottery. You don't know where the fuck you're going to get a pick at. So there's no point to tank because you can get a pick anywhere. If you're not in the lottery in the NBA, you're not getting someone that's even going to start right away. 
Yeah, I think uh, if how, you do, it's an picks. If you do, it's an lottery. anomaly. Thirteen. Thir- the first thirteen. Is it thirteen? No, it's fifteen. First fifteen are lottery picks. Technically, oh, you mean in the draft lottery or like technically a lottery pick? A lottery pick. Because I think a lottery pick is a top fifteen like, pick. Ups, Fact check that. I so could there's be what wrong. thirty teams in the NBA. How many teams That's are entered have. into the draft? Look into the lottery. I think ten are in the draft lottery. I'm probably wrong with that too. I said a number for so no reason. So out of thirty picks, I'm assuming there's as many picks in the first round as there is teams. How many of those picks are considered lottery picks that 15. are in the lottery to like? Up for grabs. Matt's fact checking that right now. Okay. What am I doing? So the top, we need to see how many people go into the draft lottery, and then what is considered a lottery pick. Because I think fifteen picks is a draft lottery, if I'm not mistaken. But I could be wrong. Not really sure here. So, nope, it just went away. I lied. Damn, it's bracken outside. Okay, cool. Thank you for uh, failing me there. Yeah, it's just giving me. So this says under the 14. current rules, the top only the top four picks are decided by the lottery and are chosen from the fourteen teams that did not make the playoffs. Yeah, that's why it's annoying. Like that's yeah. not what I want. Draft I want... lottery is fourteen picks. Yeah, but that that's not the what first I want. fourteen picks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a draft. It lottery. determines the order of the first fourteen yeah, that... picks. Okay, fourteen teams don't make the playoffs. That's so it's the teams that don't make the playoffs that get entered but, into the lottery. But that's for the four, first four, right? Yeah, because 16, 16 teams make the playoffs. So there's the 14 that didn't make the playoffs going to yeah. the lottery. This says. But like back in the day when you were like, he's going to be a lottery pick. That was like the top 13 in the thing. Yeah. But I don't know. It yeah, don't it t- don't tell me that. I don't know. It's, it must it's, be different now. It's 14. Okay, so it's 14 now. Okay. So the first 14 picks are all determined by the draft lottery to see who picks where. Before, there was dudes that didn't make the playoffs that were still weren't in the lottery. Yeah, no, you're right. There wasn't a actual lottery before. Well, there was. It was just like the ball's in there, and you're just like, all right, this is the order. Yeah, you know right, what I'm saying? right, 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 right. So, yeah, so it's it's 14. That's what it is now. I just figured it out. Yeah. And I, I 14 honestly balls don't are introduced them. and four are randomly selected to determine the winner of number one, four picks, or remaining 10 picks, so 14 picks. So top 14 picks are considered lottery picks. And that's also when you get more money by being a lottery pick as well when you're drafted as a player. All right, so, so I take that back. I'd, I'd say out of anything out of the top 10, I don't think you're getting anybody that's going to come in and be a starter. It, it's very random, Unless to be it's honest. An anomaly. Um, so that leads me to my next question then. Do you think having the number one overall pick, let's just talk NBA, is overrated? Now, that's very dependent on the draft. So, this year, it don't fucking matter where you pick. This is the this is by far the worst draft I've ever seen. This is a really this bad, is worse this, than Anthony Bennett's draft. This is a really bad draft, but this I want you terrible. to take a moment, think in your mind, think of the last so many championships. That have been won by players and teams. And I want you to take a second and think in your mind how many of those teams had a number one overall pick. Or you could just think of the last so many number one overall picks and think, does this guy have a championship? This is why I asked, do you think it's overrated? Because if you think about all these players who have been number one picks, how many of them have championships? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to go through the last 10 number one overall picks. Now, obviously, the last four to five, you got to have time. You got to build. You know what I mean? So, like, of course, Wimby isn't going to have a championship yet. But, I mean, if you go back to 2003, you got LeBron. Championship. He has a championship. But look how long it took him to get one. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? So, um, let's just go through a couple of these real quick. Victor Webinyama, obviously, he's not going to have one. Paulo Bancaro. Hey, look at what they did so far. This is number one overall pick. Is they're, looking, they're so that's promising. A, that was a huge that's turnaround. Leader of their team. Exactly. What Matt said, it's a huge turnaround. Leader of their team, elevate his game in the playoffs. Um, Cade Cunningham. Ah. He's in purgatory. Yeah. He, he's in the gulag, bro. Anthony Edwards. Uh, he it could be. Hey, might be in the finals this year. Might be. Might be in the finals this year. So it's looking good. So right now we're about two for four. Zion Williamson. 
If he could stay Promising. healthy, bro, like he's dropping forty point games. Yep. DeAndre. Ah. That's a that's a swing and a whiff though. Ah. That's a whiff. By the way, I can't say that that's like. Oh well, that's overrated because he was a first overall pick, and that was just a bad pick. I yeah. Think. By the way, Luka Doncic was in that draft. That's a horrible pick. Yeah. Um, and Trey Young. Markel Fultz. Ah. Yeah, I know. We don't even got to go. Even Lonzo was second in that draft. So, uh, Ben Simmons. Yikes. No comment. Carl Anthony Towns. Was kind of in purgatory before Ant Man came around. You know? But now you have two number one picks. That could two be number one picks. Them yep. To the finals. Yeah, I I don't think it's that important. That That's why I said it all depends on the. On the talent in the draft and who's in the draft, like you got somebody like women, y'all, you you need the first pick, <laughs> like yeah. you know, like life support. I need this first yeah. pick, and I, and I agree with you. I think the number one pick is overrated. I, I really do, for sure. I think a Just, lot of teams will be better off. Me and you have talked about this at the shop. That's why I wanted to bring this conversation to the podcast of trading your number one pick and trying to get an established guy, especially in the NBA, bro. You only need about eight players, exactly, because one player can take imagine you there. trading that number one for like. Five and ten, exactly. <laughs> like five and twelve. Yeah, like, or or look, let's say a dude like Devin Booker, the Phoenix is wanting to move on, and you trade a number one pick, and you know you're um, the Hawks have the number one pick this year. Devin Booker isn't taking the Hawks to the finals with this team, but now over whoever's going to be the number one pick, I like my odds with Devin Booker right now. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I'm that, looking. That's that's Steelers with Minka. You, we tra- it wasn't the number one pick, but it was our first round pick, and it was going to be a decent pick. Yeah. I'm. I give me a guy that's already established that I know is you sweet, know rather than taking a him. chance. Yeah, because I mean, look, I'm looking down at this list. Uh, Andrew Wiggins, he has a championship, but it's not like he led them there. Um, but I'm not going to take it away from him. Anthony Bennett, one of the worst number one overall picks of all time. Um, Anthony Davis got a championship because of him. Kyrie Irving got a championship because of him. John Wall, Blake Griffin, Derrick Rose, Greg Oden. Damn, Andrew number one Bargani, picks used to be so much better. Andrew Bogut, Dwight Howard. Yao Ming, Kwame Brown, Kenya Martin. It's got like small it goes, hands. It, it goes on and on and on. So I think, personally, I think having a number one pick is overrated because I think, too, there is an immense pressure that comes with it. Yeah. Okay, so we got to get to something else. Let's get off of that. There's just one last thing that I want to talk about before we end this and move on to that game. Um, another question for you guys. Do you guys think it is worth it for a team to take Bronny in the draft and hopes to lure LeBron to their team. Now, LeBron will be 40 years old at pretty much the start of this season. Season starts in October. He'll be 40 in December. Do we think it's worth it for a team to draft Bronny and hopes to lure LeBron to their team? You want me to read the text message I sent you guys last night? Did you guys understand what I was saying with it? Read it again real quick. Read it again real quick. Let me pull it up really quick. I'm going to go out on a limb real quick, and I'm going to say yes. But I'll let you guys expound on why you think yes or no, and then I'll give you my reasoning. But I say yes, and I'll tell you why. So I said, I said, I think it's team dependent for a team like the Pistons, who LeBron isn't going to get them there, no. But for a team with a lot of young players that – you know, they're a borderline playoff team, maybe first or second round team um, to get over the bubble next season or the season after. Especially they're going to lose their number one star probably this off season. Like the Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> Sounding real familiar to a team that maybe LeBron sat courtside for yesterday. I do. I know what you're getting to. Maybe. Might oh, yeah. I wanted it. to ask you guys that. It might be what, you guys, what did you guys think about that? Hey, he listen, he is the ultimate controlling your narrative. That was simply uh looking at the Lakers like, hey, I got options. Like, don't they, give me what I want. Or li- I like it. And it's not because it's LeBron. It's because we've seen franchises do players absolutely dirty. Do them dirty. I bro. don't think it had anything to do with that. Oh, I think it had all to do with it, bro. I think he just looked at them and was like, hey, look at look at my old team right here. Look yeah, at old like- Bay. Looking good. Looking young, dapper in the no, playoffs. No, he was if out. They had he old, was out old, there like, damn, we're eliminated already. I need some attention for myself. Nah, I think I'm he gonna was, pull up with a whole bottle of wine. I think he, I think he was looking at them like, hey, you see this young team right here? You see this team that I've taken a similar team to the finals before? You know, a team who will draft my son and have me on this roster again. 
this team right here. I think he was forcing the Lakers' hand. Even though they have already said that, like, hey, maybe we'll he give was you just what there, you want. Maybe he was just there supporting his boy, man. So go ahead, Matt. Who? Do you think it's worth it? Tristan Thompson. Shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ. He don't, so even like, he don't even like that dude. Do you think it's worth it? Think what's worth it? Them taking Bron- any team drafting Bronny to lure LeBron to their team. No. You don't think it's worth it? I think you're going to have to get rid of stuff. Unless, unless he'll come there for, like, he's a cheap dude, bro. He's not coming there for any low contract, nothing like that. You're probably going to have to get rid of some pieces and stuff like that. He's going to stay around, play his one or two years with his son, and be like, all right, y'all, I'm out of here. Like, God damn it, we just gave you $25 million. What the fuck? <laughs> I, think, I think it's worth it. I really do. You know why? And then they go to the playoffs twice, lose, and it's over. All right, so look, we got. But it gives you the shot. We least. got about three more. <laughs> we got about we got about here. three minutes to put a button on this. <laughs> so I think it is a good decision. Of course you do. But listen, it's not take take LeBron out of it. Let's just say because I know you, I know you, you can't take LeBron out of it. So let's just say it's Paul George and his son. I'll, t- Paul George, I'll take LeBron out of it. You can't tell me what I can't take. But no, because you know you don't listen to me when it comes to LeBron because you think I'm just being biased. But this is why you saw LeBron's performance this year. Okay, you saw what he can still do. He still can be your 1B. If a team who needs to get over the hump can take Bronny in the second round, I'm not saying blow your first round pick, but players who've been taking 29th in the draft, how many of those dudes last five, six, seven, eight years in the NBA? Now, I do think Bronny can be solid in the NBA. I'm not saying a star. I told you before, I think Bronny is Drew Holiday. He's got long arms. He's got a 6'7 wingspan, a 40-inch vertical. By the way, Derrick Rose had a 40-inch vertical. Um, I think he's just a great defender. He show flashes of blocking shots, playing passing lanes, locking people up. I think he's a dude who's just going to be a solid 10 points a game, four or five assists, maybe a steal or two. Nothing crazy. But if you get him Ev- in the second eventually round. Eventually or like right now? No, 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 no. Eventually. eventually. I'm about but, to say he wasn't even getting 10 in college. Oh, absolutely. But how many second round picks come in and make an immediate impact? Uh, Draymond Green might be the only one I can think of. We would have to literally go through maybe some dudes picks. from OKC. Yeah, we, we'll have to go back and take a look. <laughs> at Jalen Williams, well, nah, one of them, first rounders. They were the fu- second one was. Yeah, they were. They that's were, a fucking they were waste. A couple, they were a couple picks apart. That motherfucker. You can fact check that, good. but I think they were a couple picks apart. But um, I have a couple teams here that I'm going to ask you if you pair LeBron with this star because they're hypothetically drafting Bronny, so LeBron is going there. You pair them with it. Are they no. a contender? Hold on. First name, Joel Embiid. You pair LeBron with Joel Embiid. Do you think Philadelphia becomes a contender? You asking me or him? I'm looking at Jordan. Yeah. I think that they're already contenders if they're healthy. That's what, that was my thing. I mean. So, I mean, you add LeBron, they got to be a little better, right? Yeah, sure. So, they're also It depends what you have to give up. I don't think you have to give up anything though, because like they are, they're only paying a couple people. Like LeBron isn't gonna ask for ninety million a year. He might, bro. It's He's like, cheap, bro. Man, it, 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 within reason. All right, next name, Jalen Brunson. The Knicks don't have a high pay. <sighs> they could. <sighs> so LeBron yeah. goes to the Knicks now. Yeah. It, p- possibly. Okay. I just. Yeah. They just have like a good thing going, like chemistry wise. But yeah. if I take all that out, I guess. Yeah, just, just like, take just all player that out. wise, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, next name Steph Curry. LeBron goes to the Warriors. Their roster is depleted, bro. Yeah, oh, absolutely. They're going to need, now, listen, offseason moves are going to need to be yeah. made. You know what I mean? But LeBron Bron, loves their shooters. Just them two, I don't know, bro. I mean, that team's bad. That's what I'm but saying. But they were in the play. Clay's probably going out of here. Probably. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, bro, he's paired with... He's got a great roster right now. For sure. And a top five player in the world. Coaching was garbage. <clears throat> Last name, Luka Doncic. Yes. Luka's yeah. a contender almost by himself. Yeah. So I'm just saying because these are teams who Are they could, not considered contenders like right now? No, A they contender are. is like such a crazy thing like... Well, I don't want to say go to the finals because it's like finals is just like, I mean, a contender is like a team who can go to the finals. Like they can. The reason I asked these specific players, because I looked at their bank, I looked at their payroll. I looked at what they had available and all these teams can pay LeBron to come there. And if you're these teams, 
do you think about drafting Bronny in the second round to get LeBron James on your roster? But we'll leave that up to the people of TikTok. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Barbershop Break Room. Like and subscribe. Peace.